Father God, we thank you. We are here to hear your word of life. The Bible says of you, Jesus Christ, my Lord, my God, my King, that in him was life, and the light was the light of men, and the light shines in darkness, and darkness comprehends it not. The Bible says in the book of Romans chapter 8, verse 2, that the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set us free from the law of sin and death. Oh, Father, we pray that that spirit of life quicken us and teach us now your word, teach us your truth. And Heavenly Father, I pray everyone who hears this word throughout the world, let this word be a quickening, be an inspiration. Let this word, oh God Almighty, cause your life to flow through your children, everyone who hears this word. Thank you, my Father, my God. Glory be to your holy name, our Father, our Jehovah is our God, our helper, our Ebenezer, the rock of help. We thank you. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. We have spent the whole of this month looking at our theme and topic, God, our helper, and we have covered quite some grounds. Last week, we emphasized that the greatest helper that God Almighty has given to humankind is the Holy Spirit. As you would see in the book of John chapter 14, verse 26, there the Bible calls him our helper. He is our helper. Praise the name of the Lord. So how you walk with the Holy Spirit, how you develop with him and grow along with him is the extent to which you will enjoy the help of God in this world. Praise the name of the Lord. And so I want to encourage you and challenge you at the same time that you seek the Holy Spirit. In fact, the word I often use is to court, court him. You see the way young men in courtship behave towards the lady they want to marry. That is the way you should behave with the Holy Spirit, court him. You could see, you see every uh, man that is in courtship with a young lady that he wants to marry is a gentleman. <laughs> Hallelujah. Some after the marriage may turn to tiger and lion, but during courtship, ah, they are the gentlemen. They will even open car for the lady. Anything she says is, oh, no problem. Don't worry. Cut the Holy Spirit. They want to be with her all the time. They want to call her and hear her voice all the time. Cut him, the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. So quickly to just um, read the scripture. In John chapter 14 that I talked about, let's look at it again. Verse 16, this is our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ speaking. I'm reading with the New King James Version. And I will pray the Father and he will give you another helper that he may abide with you forever. 17, the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him for he dwells with you and will be in you. I will never leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Jump with me to verse 26. Again, Jesus Christ was speaking here. He said, but the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. Praise the name of the Lord. You must learn to draw very close and very near to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit actually dwells in us. We are the temple of the Holy Spirit. So God is not far away. God dwells in you. God dwells in me. God is with us. That is why Jesus' name is called Emmanuel, God with us. Praise the name of the Lord. In Romans chapter 8, verse 11, you can look at it. It says, if the spirit of him that raised Jesus Christ from the dead dwells in you, dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also quicken your mortal body by his spirit that dwells in you. We are the temple of the Holy Spirit. You are the house of God. I am the house of God. We are the temple of God. Glory be to our God. So we want to move as we conclude the study today to now look at, bring all this together and add what I call the God's help system for humankind. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. So we still take our texts from Hebrews chapter 13. Hebrews chapter 13, verses 5b and 6. It says, for he himself has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear what can man do to me. And what do you say? Absolutely nothing. Man can do me absolutely nothing. 
Praise the name of the Lord. However, with the understanding of God's health system for mankind, you will see the role that human beings play in God's health system for you and for me. Hallelujah. So, we want to start with your number one human helper. Hallelujah. We have described in the past studies the divine helper, the divine helper, comprising God Almighty, the Father in heaven, His Son, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit, whom we emphasized in the last teaching, and again, uh, 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 re-emphasized this morning. Now we want to look at the total health system, which now comprises the divine helper and the human helper and the support system. So these are the tripod stand that a human being benefits from as a health system. And if you understand this health system, then you can make your life very prosperous. You need this balance as you go through the journey of this life till you, we end our lives here and continue to enjoy that eternal life God has provided for us. Glory be to God. Glory be to our God. So, human health system number one is seen in the book of Genesis. Let's through, look through Genesis and then come to that health system. Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 is a familiar scripture. You know it very well. Let's read it again. What does the Bible say? Then God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him, male and female. He created them. 28, then God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it, have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. So you see here, God's original purpose for mankind. So God said, let us create man in our image. And... God created them male and female and said, for what purpose? He said, be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over all that God has created. And who were to have this dominion and who were to subdue this earth? Male and female, whom God created. Praise the name of the Lord. So we continue in Genesis chapter 2. Genesis chapter 2. Let's look at verse 7. He says, and the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living being. And man became a living being. Praise the name of the Lord. You jump from there to verse 18. He says, and the Lord God said, it is not good that man should be alone. I will make him a helper comparable to him. Did you see that? I will make him a helper comparable to him. This is the first human helper that God Almighty has made. So from here you can see, your first human helper is your spouse. Oh, many people trample on their spouses. They treat their spouses as nothing. I pity you because you have no understanding. That is the first human helper that God has sent to you. Praise the name of the Lord. Genesis chapter 2, verse 18. Read it. There is a whole lot of um, uh, controversy around uh, human equality. Let me just put it that way. Gender equality, um, racial discriminations and all that. It all comes from the lack of understanding of God's help and support system for humankind. Here you see the Bible says it very clearly that the original intent of God was to make a helper comparable to him. It was not below, it was not subject. It was comparable to him. Praise the name of the Lord. 
And if you are science inclined like myself, you will know that the prototype is usually not the best model. That as you continue to refine your model, you then have better models from the prototype. And so if you were to follow that, then read with me what happened after God created man and said he will make a helpmate, a helper. He will give him a helper comparable to him. You will see that God then made an improved version of that man. So from verse 20, so Adam gave names to all cattle, to birds, to the birds of the air, and to every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found a helper comparable to him. Again, for emphasis, a helper comparable to him. Look at 21. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall on Adam, and he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh in its place. Then the rib which the Lord God had taken from man, he made into a woman, and he brought her to the man. And Adam said, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, because she was taken out of man. 24, therefore a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, his helper, comparable to him. And they shall become one flesh. Not two, not separate, one flesh. Hallelujah. And when these two become one, oh, what power can be released through this unity. So, this has been God's original plan. To make man, to make woman, to fuse them together as one, and he let them fulfill his purpose. The purpose that God gave in the verse 28 of Genesis chapter 1. And God blessed them. God blessed them, both male and female. And God said to them, be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion. So man and woman, male and female, are comparable. They are to, in unison, fulfill this God's purpose. Praise the name of the Lord. I know that many people get confused by the Pauline teaching in 1 Corinthians chapter 7 and 1 Corinthians chapter 11, but they don't read the whole context of what Paul was teaching there. You will see that in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 7, there Paul qualify that teaching by saying that there are different graces. So people have different grades. People have different grades. Verse 7, he said, For I wish that all men were even as myself, and each one has his own gift from God, one in this manner and another in that. So as you know, Paul didn't marry, but he had the grace. And there are some people who are not married, and they have the grace, and God help you. But for those who marry, please know, that your spouse is your human, your first human helper that God has created and is not to be trampled. The man is not to trample the woman and force to lord over her and subdue her. And the woman is not to continually fight, to scheme, to um, show that she is equal with man. You are already equal, comparable. In my own word, this is me speaking. Uh, you are just a better version of man. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord, because as I said, I'm, I'm science inclined, and I know that the latter version is always better than the prototype. So as you've seen here from what we read in uh, Genesis chapter 2, God took out of the rib of man and made a woman. So that's the improved version. And this is really my conviction. Um, man is stronger physically, but there are a whole lot of other attributes that a woman has that God made it in his wisdom that a man and a woman should work together, men and women should work together to make society better, to make life better for mankind. The problem is when we start uh, trampling on one another, whether male or female, when we start uh, looking down on gender uh, rather than know the purpose for which God 
created us differently. Um, two examples, that's why I said it's my conviction. There was a, something that I was um, I, struggling with and uh, I had my views about it. I and my wife discussed about it and my wife made a position that I, I felt, well, um, I didn't agree with it. And I was praying, not praying about it. I was just praying on my own on something and all that. Then I slept and the spirit of God spoke to me very clearly. He said, that thing your wife said, she is right. Listen to her. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. So I'm not speaking theory. I'm telling you practical things. Yeah. That's been my experience. And from that day, I learned to listen. I learned to even put things to her and say, please, what's your thought? What's your view on this? Interestingly, uh, sometimes my wife would not want to even say anything. I would even then try to push her to say something, knowing that God has put something in her that can bless me. And it has been a real blessing. I pray for you if you're having problem in your marriage because of the two of you, you, the husband, the wife, not having understanding, not seeking God's peace. And therefore, you've not been able to enjoy the power of unity that God created both of you to have. I pray for you that the Almighty God by His Spirit will quicken you and help you in the name of Jesus. He will give you peace in your marriage and give you understanding of how to walk in unity. So you will enjoy the help that God has given you in the name of Jesus. Also, for those who are not married, I am not uh, insensitive to you. I pray that as many as desire to marry, that the Almighty God will make a way for you that the man God has kept for you, the woman God has kept for you, you will locate him, you will locate her, and you will marry and enjoy this help from God in the mighty name of Jesus. For adventure, it is your choice not to marry. There is also help for you. The Almighty God helped Paul, and he will help you. So I pray God help every humankind to receive the support of God in the name of Jesus. Now let's move on. i read the last scripture in this uh, subject uh, of your human helper, which is your spouse. I will read from Ephesians chapter five. I will read from verse 24. And again, never read Ephesians chapter five from verse 24 to 33 without reading verse 21. Because again, this is where people used to make the argument that ah, the woman must submit to the man. Yeah, that's right. That's true, but it is equal submission. So verse 21 teaches us in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 21. It says, submitting to one another in the fear of God. Submitting to one another in the fear of God. And of course, before you can do this, you must have gone to the place of Ephesians chapter 5, verse 18. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 18. What does it say? It says, and do not be drunk with wine in which is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit of God, the Holy Ghost, be filled with the Holy Spirit. So it is a man who, has, who is filled with the Holy Spirit that will understand what true submission to one another is. It is a woman that is filled with the Holy Spirit that will understand what true submission to one another is. Specifically in marriage, therefore, having received the Holy Spirit as written, as recorded there in verse 18, and having understood that submission is one to another, not just man to the woman and woman uh, to the man, but it is for both five parties. Let us then read verse 24 to 33 without understanding. And please note the scripture and be reading them for yourself. If you're having difficulty in your marriage, submitting to one another, or even in your workplace, even in your neighborhood where you live, in the society, submitting to one another, read this portion of the scriptures. Therefore, just as the church is subject to Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wife just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her, that he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of water by the word. 27, that he might present her to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that she should be holy and without blemish. So husbands ought to love their own wives as their own bodies. Look at that. Do you love your own? You love yourself? That's the way you should love your wife. That's the way you should love your spouse. He who loves his wife loves himself. It is yourself you are loving. This is the wisdom of God. 29. For no one 
ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it just as the Lord does the church. So here, how Jesus Christ loves the church is compared to the love of a man to his wife and vice versa, the love of the wife to the husband. Praise the name of the Lord. Verse 30, I'm the one that puts the emphasis of the love of the wife because it, it implies the love of the wife to the husband. Verse 30, for we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. 31, for this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. The same scripture that was in Genesis chapter 2 that we read before is again emphasized here. That marriage is becoming one flesh, two becoming one, and that gives you the power of unity. Are you playing that role of being a support, a helper to that man? Are you playing that role of being a helper to that woman? Right? Or are you now flexing your muscles and maltreating that woman, oppressing her? God didn't create marriage for that purpose. God created it to be a help system for you a help system for you, for the man, for the woman, so you will have better purpose, better achievement of your purpose here on earth, better fulfillment in the name of Jesus. We move to the second helper, your second helper, or the second help system. In fact, before I talk about this, I, I really want to share a screen with us, really, because we need to have this understanding. Uh, because the, it is about angels and other human beings, but they are really support system. So this is what I call God's help system for humankind. And if you understand this system, you will know how to balance your life. So I've talked about divine helper, which you can see there, almighty God, the Father, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the Holy Spirit of God that has been given to us to dwell in us. So God can intervene directly and help you as a human being. And of course, if you don't have Jesus Christ, you don't have that really personal relationship. You cannot have the Holy Spirit. So as a Christian, you have the Holy Spirit because you have come to God through Jesus Christ, his son. And Jesus Christ promised us that the Father will send us his Holy Spirit if we come to him and believe in him. And that's the truth. So you have the Holy Spirit. So here you see your human helper that God has ordained, your spouse. So for those who didn't understand this and therefore didn't want to marry, I encourage you now to marry. It is good to marry. God has given your spouse as your human helper. Is actually your true, real human helper. Then God has what I call help support systems to help human beings. And there are two folks. You have the supernatural help support system, and you have the humankind help support system. The supernatural help support system is the angelic support that God uses to help mankind and humankind. So when a man cries to God, God decides to intervene directly by his spirit, by his power. He intervenes. Or... He sends angels to help you as human beings, or he sends human beings to help you. Unfortunately, sometimes, or rather most times, when it comes to human beings, we abuse and maltreat the help that God sends to us. Let me remind us of a story in the Bible. A man called Naaman. He was a general in the army, and he was a leprous man. It was the help, a housemate in his house that helped him. She was the one that said, ah, my king, if you go to the prophet that is in Israel, he will heal you. And the king went to the prophet. It was also his uh, servant that helped him. When the king went and the prophet said, go and watch. Go to Jordan and watch. And he said, uh-uh, what is this? Is there no better river in my place? I thought the 
prophet will come out, lay his hands upon me and speak and prophesy and do the directions like some people like to do. And the prophet simply said to him, go and wash seven times. It was the servant that said, ah, my king, if the prophet told you to do a heavy thing, would you not do it, please? This one that he has told you is a simple thing, go and wash. And he went and washed and his body became cleansed like a newborn baby. So human help. God sends us human help. But what God expects is that we call on him. He is the one to direct the angelic help and the human help. We don't pray to angels. And if we look unto man also for our help, man will disappoint us, man will fail us. So much so that the scripture say, it says, woe to him that puts his trust in man. Man will fail you. So this is the help system that God Almighty has provided for humankind. If you understand this, then you will know how to relate with God. You will know how to relate with human beings that God sends to you as your help, to help you, to support you. And you will know how to respect, cherish, honor, and love your spouse, whom God has sent to you, whom God has provided as your human helper. That is the help system that God has provided for humankind. So let me use this opportunity to employ you to come to Jesus Christ, the way, the truth, and the life, so you can have the Holy Spirit of God and enjoy the relationship with your divine helper. So when man prays, a child of God cries to God, heaven will respond. Sometimes, as I said, angels will be released to come and help that person. Let us see the example quickly as we look at the book of Acts, chapter 12, verses 5 through 9. There you will see the example of Peter. Peter was arrested and put in prison, Acts chapter 12. If we look from verse 5, it says, Peter was therefore kept in prison, but constant prayer was offered to God for him by the church. Six. And when Herod was about to bring him out that night, Peter was sleeping, bound with two chains between two soldiers. And the guards before the door were keeping the prison. Now behold, an angel of the Lord stood by him, and a light shone in the prison. And he struck Peter on the side and raised him up, saying, Arise quickly. And his chains fell off his hands. Then the angel said to him, Get yourself and tie on your sandals. And so he did. And he said to him, Put on your garment and follow me. Nine. So he went out and followed him and did not know that what was done by the angel was real, but thought it was, he was seeing a vision. The church prayed and Peter prayed and God dispatched an angel. One angel is enough for you. Hallelujah. But see what the Bible says in the book of Hebrews chapter 12. Let's read from verse 22. He said, but you have come to Mount Zion and to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, to an innumerable company of angels, to the general assembly and church of the firstborn who are registered in heaven, to God, the judge of all, to the spirits of just men made perfect, to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling that speaks better things than that of Abel. Hallelujah. You are surrounded by innumerable company of angels. But we don't pray to angels, we pray to God. And when we pray to our God, as sons and daughters of God, God dispatches angels. When you pray, brothers and sisters, a lot of things happen in the supernatural realm, in the spiritual realm. We have a help support system that is supernatural, full of angels, as written there in the Bible. It says we have come to an innumerable company of angels. Innumerable company of angels. For in Acts chapter 27, verses 22 to 24, Acts 27, 22 to 24, when Paul was shipwrecked, Paul said boldly, the angel of the Lord whom I saw stood by me last night, saying, fear not, for there shall be no loss. I speak to you, fear not, for there shall be no loss. If you have come to God, if you have come to Jesus Christ, the way, the truth, and the lie, the Holy Spirit is with you to help you. And the angels of God, innumerable company of angels are around you. They will help you as God Almighty has ordained for them to do. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 14. It says, let me read from verse 13. He said, but to which of the angels has he ever said, sit at my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool? 
Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for those who will inherit salvation? Angels are ministering spirits to minister to those who will inherit salvation. You and I who have come to Jesus Christ, as it is written in the book of Psalm 91, you look from verse 10, it says, there shall no evil before thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling, for he will give his angels charge over you, over me, to keep us, to keep you, to keep me in all our ways. In their hand they will bear us up, lest we dash our foot against a stone. Praise the name of the Lord. I want to round off by just an example of human help. A man, David, was greatly helped by God. But how did David succeed? It was through the human support that God sent to him. The whole first chronicle chapter 12. Let's just look at it quickly. He said, now these were the men who came to David as Ziklag, while he was still a fugitive from Saul, the son of Kish. And they were among the mighty men. Help us in the war. They came to David to help David, armed with bows, using both the right hand and the left in hurling stones and shooting arrows with the bow. They were of Benjamin, Saul's brethren, Saul's own people, were the ones whom God moved to come and help David. Look at verse 18. Then the spirits came upon Amaziah chief of the captains, and he said, we are yours, O David, we are on your side, O son of Jesse, peace, peace to you, and peace to your helper, for you, for your God helps you. How did his God help him? Both divine intervention while Saul was trying to kill him, and by sending human beings. And they went to help him. And they helped him and made him king. So David received them and made them captains of the troop. These are the people who became the mighty men of David that you will see in 2 Samuel chapter 23 from verse 8 to 39. They became mighty men of David, men of valor. So do you know the human support God has sent to you to help you? I call them human network, people that God has sent to help you. If you don't recognize this God's help, you cannot go far. Even if you're the most anointed human being on earth, hear me, if you don't understand this help system, because when you pray to God, there are some prayer you are praying and God is saying, I have already given you your spouse to help you. He is your helper, talk to her. Talk to him. If you refuse, you will stay there. God will not come. The Holy Spirit will not move. There are some prayers you will cry to God, and God will dispatch angels, and they will intervene. They don't have to appear to you, but you will see things happen. There are times you cry to God, especially when the devil is causing trouble. You know, the devil is a very stubborn being. He creates all manner of problems. You cry to God. And the spirit of God moves and guides you. They cast out that devil. Speak the word. Command the devil out. The power of God intervenes. God intervenes. There are times you cry to God. And God will raise human beings. And sometimes they come in very rough packages. They are the least people you expect. They may not be the people you like. They may not do things the way you expect your helper to do things. But you must learn to develop the capacity, the relationship, relational capacity to manage people, to relate with people. It is the leverage of people that will take you higher, take you further, make the full purpose of God for your life to be fulfilled. I want to close here. So David was helped, as you can see. He was then made king by the people whom God sent to help him. Today, look at your life. Look around you. The help that God has sent to you. You may be surprised that I didn't put a separate box for your family. That is your brothers and sisters, mother, father, and uh, children. I didn't put a separate box. 
They are your part of the human health system that God has given you. God has given me. God has given us. But if you check your life, you will find that they haven't been your greatest help in life. To, uh, to reach that high place God has ordained for you. Families have responsibilities. But they are not your greatest help to reach your peak. They have their responsibilities. But your spouse, he or she is directly given to you by God as your helper. So let us learn to use the help, God's help system that God has given to us. I want to conclude again by the statement or with the statement I started with. God is our helper. If there is anything in life that God cannot help you, know that there is no one else whether supernatural or natural, that can help you. I pray the Almighty God help you, my brothers and sisters help you, all those who have hurt me. And as you cry unto God today, the Almighty God help you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. God bless you.